Hey guys, it's Sarah here with your live chat for tonight. Um, I used to do these on the group all the time and I feel so bad that I've kind of stopped, stop, stopped hopping on live to give you some tips and chat with you and I promise I'm going to do it more in the new year. So if you have um, things you want to talk about, questions, definitely drop them down below in the comments. So um, for those of you who are new to the group, we have lots of new members. Um, welcome. Um, my name is Sarah Maurer. I'm a fitness coach that helps hikers get in shape for big peaks and big trails, um, get in awesome shape. And I um, blog over at misadventurepants.com. If you don't know that necessarily from <laughs> joining the group, you might have come from somewhere else on Facebook, but my blog is really the place to go to just get lots of free help, free articles. Um, there's lots of great free tools on there you can download. And if you like those, check out some of the um, paid stuff as well. Um, there's some training plans and some eBooks and lots of things that will hopefully help you reach your goals. Um, so I'm going to talk to you today, this being the new year, about behavior change secrets. And um, this is the time of year when we make New Year's resolutions. And I'm going to give you some tools that can help you really nail those. There's some really horrible statistic that um, <laughs> I think like only half of people like are make um, make it through. March with their New Year's resolutions and it's really too bad because usually our New Year's resolutions are really awesome things. They have the potential to change our lives. We want to get fit. We want to eat better. We want to drink less. Me. <laughs> so <laughs> these are all really important things. So I'm going to try to give you some tools today, some behavior change, some psychology stuff that I think is super helpful. It's really helped me in my life make in, like positive changes and um, I remember learning about about the, um, the, the, the model I'm going to teach you is um, not mine, it's something that is used a lot in coaching. Um, but I remember learning this whenever I was studying for my personal trainer cert and I thought I had like the keys to the universe when I heard it. I'm like, this is amazing, this is powerful. Um, and now I think about it all the time when I'm working with people and just, you know, trying to, trying to sort myself out. <laughs> um, it's good stuff. So um, what I'm going to talk to you about is the five stages of behavior change. Um, so sit back, grab a glass of wine or whatever you like, coffee, tea, whatever you like while you're listening to this. And at the end of this, if you stick around, I'm also going to tell you about an awesome free tool that I'm launching on my my website that will help you with your New Year's resolutions. So five stages of behavior change. There are basically five stages whenever you want to make any change and each of them kind of has like a goal or a challenge that you have to get over to move to the next stage. So um, knowing what that is can be really helpful to keep you moving forward, to know where to focus your energy, to actually stay on track with your goal. So let's start, with, let's go through the stages. Um, I'm gonna start with stage number one. It's called pre-contemplation. I didn't make up these words, <laughs> but um, I kind of like this word. Um, Pre-contemplation means you're not even contemplating making a change, which is probably not you if you're watching this video, but you probably know these people. This is Uncle Joe who <laughs> just thinks that fitness is silly and that you're silly for wanting to work out and that um, it's totally cool to just eat junk food all day because it tastes good and it makes you happy and why would you want to, you know, be like those crazy vegan people that just, you know, eat healthy food all the time. Um, I'm sure you know this person. Um, so this is probably not you, but I, I, I'm going to tell you a little about it because it's where it probably will show up in your life if you're making a big behavior change is some of the people around you are going to be in this stage. Um, They've convinced themselves that they don't need to change, they're not interested in changing. Kind of my take on that is most of us intuitively know that that's a bad decision. We know that we should eat healthy, that we should work out. So it takes a fair amount of energy and denial to maintain that story that it's okay to be where they are right now. So when they see you change, sometimes that's very hard for them. You're, you're making it really hard for them to stay in denial with your, your changes in your life. And you know, we're, 
I think um, sometimes they actually, unfortunately, get upset and they might not support you and they might actively sabotage you. They might tell you things like, oh, you've tried this before and, and it hasn't worked out. Oh, haha, -ha, you're trying to lose weight again, a silly little girl. Um, some people can be really nasty about it, like I have relatives that tell me because I eat healthy, I'm really controlling and have an eating disorder, which is nice, right? Um, I think like all healthy behaviors have some element of having mastery over yourself and control. So am I controlling? Are you controlling for trying to be more healthy? Maybe, <laughs> but it's not necessarily a bad thing or something they should be concerned about. But, you know, like the denial is very strong and, and really there's nothing you can do about it um, other than just remind yourself that adults are allowed to make bad decisions. Adults are allowed to be in denial. Adults are allowed to do anything they want, including eating tons of junk food. Um, and, you know, so, so arguing with them or trying to change them is probably not going to be very productive. I think what's really awesome, though, is um, one of the big success factors for making a long-term behavior change is having people in your life that are modeling that behavior and supporting that behavior. So someday, if they want to change, you're already going to be two steps ahead, and that's going to be so helpful for them. So, you know, just less release all the bad <laughs> comments and non-support, and you, you focus on you. Um, you can do this. That's awesome. Um, so stage one, pre-contemplation, probably not where you're at, but you might have to deal with other people. Uh, stage number two, um, contemplation, this might be some of you. Um, this is where you realize that you really need to make a change. Um, I really want to be more fit. I want to, you know, I realize that, you know, I'm too sedentary and maybe... I need to lose weight, maybe I need to eat healthier. Um, maybe you've had like a health diagnosis or maybe you've just you know noticed yourself gaining weight, so you're not happy with where you are. You know, maybe you've just, you know, sometimes people read an article that really kind of shocks them and they're like, wow, I, I drink way too much. It's probably time to make a change. Um, so con the contemplative stage, you're there, but you have actually made the change yet. So you haven't really taken any steps. And kind of what can happen at this stage is as soon as you start thinking about making a change, all the doubts come up, all the past failures come up. Um, often people who have tried to lose weight or tried to establish an exercise routine have not been successful. So you, you think back on that and you think, well, it didn't work before. <laughs> Do I really have the heart to try again? Um, or, you know, you find excuses, you know, when I'm, this is just not a good time to do this is one that comes up a lot. I don't have the time right now. Um, and really, you know, when, notice when those excuses are coming up for you, really your um, challenge at this um, this stage is to kind of get past the excuses and make a bit more of a commitment. So if you are having a thought like this is a bad time, <laughs> you know, really have a stop and kind of break that down and sit with that for a minute. You know, is this a good time? Is there a good time? Is there ever going to be a good time? Um, you know, what if you started, what, you know, what is making you think it's a bad time? Do you think it's going to take a lot of time to get in shape? It might take, you know, basic fitness, you know, half an hour, many, like five times a week will do amazing things for you, um, just even going out and walking. So, you know, kind of sit with those excuses when they come up and challenge them a bit and think about, you know, is this really something that should stop me from reaching my goal and being the person I want to be? So contemplation. So we have pretend contemplation, number one. Number two, contemplation. Contemplation, you've decided to change. You need to change, but you haven't done anything yet. And then hopefully most people go from contemplation to stage three, which is preparation. Uh, preparation is when you kind of start kind of putting out, you kind of start easing into this new behavior change. So for example, if you're trying to get fit, maybe you go out and you walk a couple times a week, or maybe you even go to the gym just to kind of work out, check out what it's like. And at this stage, you're, you're not doing it consistently. You're just kind of here, there, when I have time, when I think of it, when I feel inspired. Um, so what happens is, you you go and you put some energy into changing, but you don't necessarily get the results that you want, and that can be very discouraging. So your challenge in the preparation stage is really to establish 
um, a plan. <laughs> you know, how I, I want to lose 20 pounds. So what is that going to look like? Exactly what am I going to do? And one of the things that, one of the thoughts that kind of tends to come up and sabotage you in the preparation stage is confusion and just this feeling of, I don't know, like this feeling of overwhelm. Like, how do I lose 20 pounds? I have no idea. I've tried things in the past. They haven't worked. Um, so your, your challenge in preparation is really to sit, maybe do some research, maybe, you know, talk to some other people that have lost 20 pounds, you know, look on the internet, look on Pinterest, um, get some ideas and really start making a plan. It doesn't have to be a perfect plan. You can adjust it as you go along, but you need some kind of plan that you can stick to, to move from preparation into stage four, which is action. Action is when um, you're out there really trying to stick to the plan. You are really committed to making this fitness thing work, you have a plan, and you are making a big effort to do your workout plan as you have set it out for yourself. And the challenge of action is consistency. As soon as you start trying to stick to the plan, <laughs> reality kind of sits in and sets in and you realize, oh, you know, I have a really hard, you know, I have a really hard time leaving work and early enough in order to get to the gym. So, you know, I had to figure something else out. Either I have to change something in my routine so that I do leave early, or maybe going to the gym after work isn't the best thing for me. Maybe it's better for me to go in the morning or to go during lunch if that's an option. Um, so, so really th looking at the obstacles that come up and working with them so that you can make this fitness routine consistent and just really a habit and part of your life. And uh, one thing that's really interesting about the brain and knowing this really helps me be consistent and stay consistent is um, whenever, before you really get into an exercise routine, your brain is programmed not to exercise and your brain likes efficiency. If we don't exercise, like go into exercise is just a big pain in the ass and brain is like, uh, uh what's this? I, I don't like this. But what'll happen? You can actually program your brain to just go exercise and not question. If you consistently go for, you know, maybe like a few weeks, a few months, it's just going to happen automatically. And then if you ever want to not exercise and skip a day, your brain's going to be like, oh, what? No, we exercise, get in the gym, <laughs> which is kind of neat. Um, and then, there, you know, there's obviously some days you're really tired or you're sick and then you don't. But, you know, the habit and the routine will become to exercise. So that's where you want to get during this action stage and you can get there but you'll, you'll have to figure some things out. Maybe if you're a mom with kids at home, um, you're gonna, this is the stage where you're gonna figure out, oh, you know, I'm gonna have a babysitter on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so I can go to the gym, or I can go for my training hike. And an another tip for this stage, um, every week, sit down and just really, you know, look at your your, your appointment book or your, your calendar on your phone, and take a look at what's coming up. You're like, oh, I have like an extra long late meeting at work, I better or make sure I work out in the morning that day or maybe that'll be my day off and I'll work out on a Sunday if I don't normally do that um, so that's what that, that's another tip you can use to really just make sure you don't get tripped up by things that <laughs> come up on that day you're like whoa I forgot about this um, don't make sure that that doesn't happen so action working out establishing consistency is your challenge and if you can establish consistency and keep working out you know you're not perfect but you know most days you are following your plan and working out like 90% of the time for six months, you move into the final stage, and this is called maintenance, and this is a great stage to be in, because this is where it's pretty easy. It's, um, it's a habit for you. It's just normal for you to get up in the morning and go work out, if that's your plan, or leave work at five and go straight to the gym, if that's your plan, or go hiking every weekend with your friends. You'll just do it naturally, and you'll you know, not even question whether I should be doing this or thinking, oh, this is hard. So it's a great place to be. Your challenge in maintenance, though, is relapse prevention. And anyone, I mean, anyone, if you've been working out for years, I don't care, like you are, you know, big life events can come along and just really kill your fitness routine. And sometimes that's okay, right? You know, obviously we have things that happen in our families, things that happen in our jobs, and you know, maybe we have a baby and or get pregnant and have a baby, and that's you know totally cool to take some time off and just um, 
but um, and plan for that. But you, you want to know that that's coming and think about, if you can, how can you stay fit? So, you know, pregnancy is a good example. You're thinking about getting pregnant this year in 2019. You're already a good exerciser. You're in a routine. So, you know, maybe this is the time before you get pregnant to do some research, you know, well, how do you exercise during pregnancy? What can I do? And, you know, after I have the baby, you know, should I take time off? How long should I wait? Um, you know, find all that stuff out so you can be making your plan. And, you know, whenever you do get pregnant, you'll know exactly what to do. Um, and it, sometimes job changes. Um, uh, you might have a job where you're going to have to travel more and maybe you're going to have to figure out how do I work out in my hotel room or how do I make sure that my, my work is sending me to places with fitness facilities. Um, those are all just things to think ahead and plan for because they're going to change your fitness routine. So the more you can think about it ahead of time, the more you can prevent a long lapse where it's really hard to come back or even you might get discouraged and stop and oh my gosh, starting all over again after you've got there would just be so sad. <laughs> so <laughs> planning ahead in maintenance, relapse prevention is your challenge. Make sure that you do it. So those are the five stages, pre-contemplation, contemplation, preparation, um, action, and maintenance. And um, for those of you who are in the preparation stage, that's pretty common with New Year's resolutions. Maybe you've been off for a little bit and thinking about getting back to fitness. Um, so if you're contemplating or preparing and just haven't quite, the preparation, remember, is where you really need to make a plan. Um, I have an awesome freebie on my website for you, and I will, after I get done speaking, drop the link down there so you can go right there and download it. Um, but it's a it's an ebook talking about um, establishing a workout routine. This is for people that are just coming, either new to fitness or just coming back. You might even, you know, just be like walking around your neighborhood at this point. That's totally fine. This will work for you. Um, so there's an ebook that talks about how to establish a consistent fitness routine, and there's a four week workout. Plan you can follow that's just totally awesome for beginners and even if you can't even walk for 30 minutes if you can walk for just a few minutes it will tell you what to do and if you follow this plan um, some of you it's a four-week plan um, some of you might need to repeat some of the weeks if you're really really new but if by the time you get to week four you work out seven days a week like in a row and I for a lot that's that's awesome if you can do that then you're pretty committed I think and you're, you're on your way to you know having just a lifetime of fitness whether you want to you know if you're on this blog you might want to take that into hiking or mountaineering or anywhere you want to go maybe you just want to be fit totally cool fit and healthy <laughs> it's a good goal so I will drop the link for that down below and um, yeah if you have any questions you can drop them in the comments as you're watching the replay and um, yeah I will have a great Friday night I will hopefully be back in a few days and have some more tips for you okay bye take care